Hello, this is Reza Rat from Radacat. In this video, I'm going to talk about a specific type of pattern of Power Query and Power BI, how to transform your table structure from having one date column and status changes, and this working as an effective date, to something like this, that you have a from date and a to date, uh, and you can see the period that the status has been changed from. Let's see how this is possible in Power BI and Power Query. Uh, to give you a little bit of background about why such a table would be better, I uh, suggest you to have a look at my other video, the previous video that I explained uh, that what is the difference between a table like this, which I call it a status log table, which has uh, um, like the item, in this case, employee, the roles and the status of role changes with one effective date versus a table like this, which have, uh, which has actually a from date and a to date, and it's much more efficient to find the, uh, the period in which that role has been, that employee has that role. So I explained about that separately. Uh, make sure to check out that video, the previous video in our channel about that. The link to that is down in the description below. In this video, I'm going to explain how this is possible. Now I'm going to remove the steps that I have done already to achieve something like this. Uh, and, and then uh, I'll show you how this is possible. So I'll get all of these steps actually delete until end one of the transformations you can use in Power Query, deleting this one too, and I'm going to show you how this is possible. So I have a table just like this. It's a fairly simple table. It has one date column. Uh, what it tells me is that each employee at this given date, uh, actually by this status has this role. For example, Reza Rad has been hired as a developer at 14th of uh, January 2019, uh, Rezarad promoted to developer lead at 20th, 23rd of February 2020. Now I want this to change and I have a from and to date. Uh, there are a bunch of uh, steps to do that. The first thing is that we'll need to uh, sort this by the date so that let's say the oldest date comes uh, at the top, then we group it by the item, key item in my case is employee, so then I have each employee and all the status changes of that employee through the time. Then I merge each record with the record, uh, with the record after that so that I can get the from and to date. So this is possible with a number of steps. The details is again down in the description in my blog article. I'll start with the sorting based on this column. To, to sort a column, I can simply just click on this uh, little arrow key uh, for the date column and sort it ascending. This will bring the, uh, the oldest records at the top. Then, uh, because I'm going to do a grouping after this, I'm making sure that the sorting happens definitely before grouping. I'll add one step here using insert a step after and I use the table.buffer to make sure that this process is happening before that. Table.buffer, you can just type that as an expression here. The input of that table.buffer, this is the name of the previous step sorted rows. You can see it is using this specific uh, signature for naming. That is because in M and Power Query scripting, that is a signature when you have special characters such as a space. Again, link to that is down in the description below. So once I have done that, my data is sorted. Now I need to group it by, by the key item. In my case, it's employee. I right click on that and I say group it by. Uh, when I right click on a column and say group by, that column will appear as my key group column here, employee. And then I can choose an operation. I don't want an aggregation. I don't really want count of rows or anything like that. All I want is everything for that employee to be as a sub table. In cases like that, I'll choose all rows as the operation, which is quite helpful way to get the sub table. I can call this data, for example the sub table. So what happens is that this operation, at the end of this operation, I will have one record per employee and all the 
subtable of that employee would be as another column called data. When I click on OK, this is uh, how the outcome looks like. One record per employee. If I click on this blank area, I'll see the preview of that table here. For example, for Layla, this shows all the status changes of Layla hired as a consultant, left, and then hired as a senior consultant and the dates for that. Uh, same for Reza as well. Now we are getting close to to uh, one step closer to what we want to achieve. Uh, one of the things we need to do here is that we need to be able to merge each of these records with the record right after that. For example, this record with that and then this record with that. To do this operation, one of the ways to do that is actually add an index column to this table and explain, uh, I explained that in another video. One easy way to do that is to go to add column, add a custom column. This would uh, give you the ability to write a formula here. I use table dot add index column function. Quite simple function. The first input is the table itself. Um, um, in this case, table is the column that has tables in it. In my case, it's data. Then the name of the index column, index, I would say, uh, and the starting index. Let's say I start this from one. So this means index would be one, two, three. Uh, and I just, um, I can call it something or just leave it as custom. So once I have written that, the codes are down in the description below to my blog article again. This new column would have a table, but the difference is that this time the table has an index column in it. And this index actually is not an index across entire table. It is an index for each group only. I explained that in another video as well. Now I have the indexes and I have the table, so I can just expand it. I don't really need the other two columns. I can right click on it and say remove other columns and expand this uh, to all of the columns underneath. I don't need original column name as a prefix. And this would be the outcome. I'll use transform detect data type to make sure that they have the right data type. So, so far I achieved this. All of these columns is what actually we had we had before um, this operation. All we have done is we have added this index column, which is quite helpful. First is that this index restarts at every group. You see, I have two groups, two employees. For each of these, I have a index restarting. Now, uh, what I can do is that I can actually use um, a copy of this table and then merge this table with that table with employee equal employee index equal index plus one. Let me show you how that is possible. I can right click on this table, create a duplicate of this, which is basically the same copy of this with all the steps. Once I have the duplicate and I can call it row two or whatever you want to call it, doesn't really matter. I make sure that this new duplicate doesn't load into Power BI. I disable the enable load because this table itself is not loading into Power BI. This table is used to merge back to the original table. Now I go back to the original table and because I want each row to be matched with the row after that, I add one to this index. So if index is two, if index is one, it will become two so that it can match with the record with the number two here. Um, and that is possible just simply by clicking on index, going to the transform tab, Clicking on index, going to the transform tab uh, from standard, clicking on add and then add one. Make sure you are choosing that from transform tab, because if you choose it from add column tab, it is going to add a column with that. So now this is actually added one to each of my index numbers. If it was one, it is now two. If it was three, two, it is now three. Now the last step is that I merge this with that row two table, which is the duplicate table using home merge queries. And my second query would be row two and I use employee holding the control key. I choose index as well. Same order employee index. You see that they have the, um, the index of joining here as well. You should follow the same, uh, the same order in both tables. When I click on, okay, the new, 
uh, record would come like that. Each of these is a record of the other table, which is a copy of this table. I'll expand it. All I need is just the date column from this table. And that would be my to date. My from date would be this column. I'm going to call it from date. I'm going to call this one to date. And then I don't need the index column as well. I'm just going to get rid of that. So I managed to convert my structure of table from one date column to two date columns, which has the from date and to date, which is much easier to analysis, much more efficient. If you are interested to learn why this is much more efficient, go and check out my other blog article. There are a lot of links to relevant articles which explain more about things that I didn't have time to explain in this uh, video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you have any questions feel free to put it in the comments below. Uh, if you like this video go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have weekly videos on Power BI. Thank you.